questions um, by department. First, I want to tell you a little bit of the difference between blood services and our chapter services. Blood is FDA regulated, uh, so we have to make sure that our facilities stay locked in order to maintain a safe blood supply. Because of what our chapter, the services our chapters offer, they are a little more open to the community. Blood services starts in the donor recruitment department. Our donor recruitment reps are responsible for setting up blood drives throughout our Midwest region. We cover the state of Nebraska, part of Iowa, and a little bit of Kansas. They work with businesses, churches, high schools, colleges, and community groups to establish states, reserve facilities, and train coordinators and groups of volunteer on how to recruit donors. They are also responsible for ensuring that each blood drive is signing up enough donors to meet a forecasted goal. The day of the blood drive, it is handed off to our collections department. Collections is made up of, group of phlebotomists, people who are trained in the skill of taking blood. It is their job to run each blood drive to follow the FDA guidelines and restrictions that have been given to us. After the blood drive is finished, the, each unit of blood is taken to our labs. Our labs are responsible for testing each and every unit of blood, regardless of how many times that donor has come through the door. It's our responsibility to make sure that each unit is safe for the patients that we serve. Our labs are also responsible for separating the, comp the unit of blood into its individual components, which would be red cells, platelets, and plasma. Once each unit has been separated, tested, and typed, it is sent to our hospital services department. Hospital services is responsible for storage and delivery of the finished product. They store red cells in a refrigeration for up to 42 days. They can store platelets under constant agitation for up to five days. And plasma can be frozen for up to one year. When hospitals call for a specific type or component, our hospital services department is responsible for packaging the units that are needed and delivering those to the hospitals. Volunteers help us from start to finish in this entire process. They are responsible for working at blood drives in both canteen and registration. Registration would be assisting donors before they donate, and canteen would be post-donation, watching donors for reactions, and also making sure that they have juice and snacks after they're finished. We also have volunteer drivers who help us out by picking up blood at blood drive and delivering it to our lab so that they always have units of blood to be processing. We also have hospital services drivers who work directly with our hospital services staff to deliver the finished product to our hospitals to patients in need. The Red Cross has been partnered with Omaha Public Power District since 1988 to provide financial assistance for OPPD electric bills. Persons living in any of the 13 counties serviced by OPPD can apply for assistance. The Energy Assistance Program operates year-round. Funds for the program come from three main sources, voluntary contributions from OPPD customers, OPPD-led um, fundraising, and proceeds from the sale of advertising in OPPD's monthly newsletter outlets. Clients living within the Omaha metro area call our appointment line to schedule an interview. In 2010, approximately 3,500 individuals received over $300,000 worth of assistance on their OPPD bills. In addition to the OPPD Energy Assistance Program, the American Red Cross is also partnered with Nebraska Public Power, known as NPPD. Um, approximately five years ago, this partnership began and NPPD refers to their program as the Pennies for Power program. NPPD provides electrical services to um, various parts of Nebraska as well as the southern part of South Dakota. Additionally, I handle all the client casework for disaster services, which would include fires, tornadoes, floods, etc., etc. This involves interviewing and working directly with the clients in their recovery efforts. I also supervise the Meals on Wheels program in Council Bluffs as well as their utility assistance programs. If you enjoy meeting and working with people 
and are looking for a very rewarding volunteer opportunity to make a difference in someone's life, I would love for you to consider volunteering for the Energy Assistance Program or the Meals on Wheels Program. Right now, um, with the Energy Assistance Program going on, I receive probably anywhere from three to five thank you cards a month from clients from all over thanking me for the help that they received on their utility bill. It's, um, I mean, it's coming from the bottom of their heart that they're sending these thank you cards because without that little bit of help that they received, you know, they might be sitting there without any power, um, you know, maybe they're having a medical crisis or something like that, so it's very heartwarming. In the first line of response for any area in the United States for American Red Cross are its disaster action teams. Uh, we affectionately call our DAT teams. Um, these are the teams of trained volunteers who go at a moment's notice to respond to any kind of a disaster that we would have in, in, in our regions, for example. 97% um, of probably what's responded to throughout the country uh, are home house fires and apartment fires, uh, which accounts for the you know the largest percentage. Um, and, and for example, in the Omaha metropolitan area, in a typical year, there are 230 locally funded operations or you know responses. Uh, it averages out to about 245 families a year, a thousand individuals who are assisted by by American Red Cross Disaster Action Team response in an area such as ours. Disaster volunteers that become involved um, become involved through the Disaster Action Team um, activity. Uh, that's how they train, that's how they, they first are involved in, in uh, disaster work. As they further get involved or their interest develops, um, we find that what they will do is get more training in different areas to where they can respond, let's say, outside the area to disasters that, that are elsewhere in, in the United States. I, I, I call myself a disaster geek. So there's something about, there's something about the, the, the response to people's sudden immediate needs as a result of a house fire or a result of a tornado or a hurricane or a flood uh, of people who are really hurting and and need help with a, a you know immediate uh, needs that immediate help um, and there's just something about it that really feels good my experience was in hurricane ivan in 2004 with very little training going into with a team of 15 or 16 people into Bruton, Alabama to help that community which was just ravaged by 27 tornadoes and the winds of, the, of Hurricane Ivan. Wow, you know, it was just like, this is, this is good work. This is, and I was hooked from, you know, from that. So I, I think probably what happens is that people, when they get into that and if they start feeling themselves really hooked with the, the adrenaline of helping people in, in need, um, then they, they probably have found what they, they really would really like to spend some time doing. In our department, we do first aid, CPR, aquatics, and child care type programs, which include babysitting, scrubby bear, and uh, fire prevention with basic aid training. It's very important to take health and safety classes because you just never know when you're going to be asked to react to a situation. It may be a family, a friend, or coworker who you may have to help. It may be as simple as giving them a Band-Aid or as uh, immediate as calling 911 and beginning CPR. All of those are very important things to learn and all of those you learn in our classes. We have several experiences where after someone has taken a class, they go home, within a week they've actually used their skills. Uh, anywhere from helping a family member who is choking on a lifesaver. We taught a young student how to do the abdominal thrust. He went home a week later, his brother was choking on a lifesaver and was able to dislodge that and save his life. I took first aid, I was a camp counselor, and I had one of my students that was actually having a seizure uh, at the camp. And because of the training that I had, I was able to help that person and get them the medical help that they needed. 
We just welcome you to the Red Cross. We are excited that you have decided to join us. We're a great bunch of um, individuals who come together for a common cause to help prevent, prepare for, and respond to emergencies. Our primary activity is taking care of service members and their families when they are apart and they have emergencies. So for example, if we have a family that has a death, an illness, um, a serious injury or something of that nature and the service member is away, family can contact the American Red Cross. We verify the emergency and then we send an emergency communication message to the service member and then he and his commander can make a decision about leave and come back this way. Um, to the family and then also we help families during deployments when service members and their families are separated for long periods of time. We have a couple of different things we do with them. Um, briefings and then we have um, a course that we offer called Coping with Deployment that uh, really does help families. I've taken it myself as I am the spouse of an active duty member myself. Um, and so we try to meet the needs of these families when uh, they have crisis going on and then and helping them to teach helping to teach them how to cope with emergencies, when, whether they're uh, disaster related or just family related. International Services has multiple components. The first one that most people are familiar with is International Disaster Relief. And so people can donate to the American Red Cross to help with a disaster overseas. And then that component, um, those dollars actually go to the Federation, which is a part of the Red Cross movement, and then they launch a disaster response um, on a large scale. Then also we help families that are separated due to war or conflicts. So families can communicate by writing Red Cross messages and the International Committee of the Red Cross, which is housed out of Geneva, Switzerland, will collect those messages on their behalf and then send them to the appropriate country. So when they come to the American Red Cross, they go to Washington, D.C., then they then disperse them to the appropriate chapter um, throughout the United States. So we get the message here. When we receive it, we hand carry that to the recipient to ensure that they get that letter in a timely fashion. Also help with international tracing for families that have been separated due to war or conflict. Um, anywhere in the world. Uh, one of the most famous, of course, is Holocaust tracing, and we do that, families that were separated because of World War II and the Holocaust that occurred. Um, we try to reunite families or at least help them find loved ones, whether they're living or deceased. And then, of course, if there are families that are just separated because of a conflict that has not been labeled a war, um, we try to help those families get reunited as well. And so, uh, lots of information goes into that, lots of tracking, but uh, it is a way for us to do family reunification. I would say that if you just have a heart for people and um, wanting to help them when they're in crisis, this is a good, a good opportunity for you to do that. If you like doing lots of research and helping to find information on families that are um, separated or doing a tracing piece, that's another opportunity. Um, there's just a lot of things you can do in both of these areas. We have a lot of outreach to military families going on regularly. There um, are lots of events out at the um, local military installation that we host. And then we have a lot of community-based military families that we try very hard to provide as much um, support to them as possible. And so we're always looking for volunteers who are interested in helping military families. My name is Sue Severin, and I'm an American Red Cross volunteer. Um, most of my work is done with the disaster action team in responding to local emergencies, be it house fires, apartment fires, that type of thing. One person, it starts with one. You as the local volunteer getting the training that you need to help people. Take advantage of the Red Cross training and support they can give you. Mentor yourself if you're a new volunteer. Mentor with some folks that have been doing it for a while. Be genuine. Work with your fellow volunteers to do the best you can for the people that are affected and to keep yourself mentally and physically strong so that you can help. It takes education. It begins with education education and compassion, and putting yourself in the other person's place. Um, having been a displaced person and going through my own personal and family issues, 
Um, I try to learn from my mistakes and my life experiences, being that I'm one of the older generation, and I, I hope that my higher power kind of is the one that has directed me in what I try to fo focus on. Sometimes you can help yourself just as much as you're helping somebody else by reaching out a hand. Sometimes it's all you can do is be there for comfort and compassion and to hold a hand. Other times you can do bigger things, but I found in my experiences that a lot of times just being able to relate to folks that are going through the loss of their home or a loved one or a pet, anything, knowing that someone that is there that genuinely does care and clients that have been affected through any type of disaster could tell when people really do care means a great deal and helps. A lot of times all people want to do is be heard and they, that will enable them to empower themselves to get back on the road to recover from whatever disaster they've experienced. Hi, this is Tina Levelarte. I'm the CEO for the Nebraska and Southwest Iowa region of the American Red Cross. I want to thank you for spending time with us to learn more about how you can be part of this fabulous organization. Volunteers are the heart and soul of this 130-year-old institution. Uh, your role here will be special. You will make a difference in the lives of so many people, not only here in our own communities, but really all across the country and across the world. If you choose to become part of this family, please know that my door is always open. I'll be happy to hear about your experience, to do what I can to enhance it, to make sure that you are able to learn, to grow, and to impact the lives of people who are truly your neighbors and friends.